Hi folks, uh, a, a, br a brief munted supplement for, for y'all. You'll have seen this story in the news this week, in some of the news, I mean. I, I mean, look at these people, look at them. Uh, look, at what, look at what they're doing. You know what they do? They harass women. They harass women in bathrooms, no less. They stalk women in bathrooms and hound them and victimize them and oppress them and silence them. They claim to speak for women, to speak for women's rights and interests, yet this is what they do to women. Can you believe it, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen? Behold the plight of women and woe, woe, I say. We must enact something. We must enact some kind of protection, perhaps, so as to save women from these people. Here, here, I say, boo and such, blah. All right. Uh, at what point <clears throat> in that diatribe of mine just now did you start to fall off the train, so to speak? At what point did I lose you? Or did you make it all the way through, unironically and, and enthusiastically, fist-pumping at my every word? Then the following rant is for you, friend. Whether or not you understand... Uh, the context of what's happening there and which side you should be excusing based on your political leanings. Let's make this clear. They harass a woman. One individual. For, for, all, I, for all I know, they are still harassing that woman. Uh, and indeed, we'll, we'll go on to see some of the footage of that. I'm not saying it's a unique uh, incident, and by no means am I excusing this behaviour. I agree that this is beyond the pale. This is actual harassment in its most concrete form. It's not like so-called cyberbullying, where you can just turn your computer off or close your eyes, <laughs> etc. This, this is physically tracking down a person in the flesh and physically yelling at them when they're in a bathroom stall and cannot get away, and again on an aeroplane where they cannot get away, or indeed at their own door where they cannot get away. That is the physical reality of what we call harassment, a concept that has existed since long before the innovation of information technology that is blessed with an off switch, or just a block button, or just a mute button. My issue is... Right. When a woman, an individual woman, is victimised in any way, she magically becomes women. For the sake of the threat narrative, of course, for the sake of whatever you're trying to rhetorically bolster. You harassed a woman. You're now a woman harasser. Well, yes, I understand how politically weighty and expedient this could be when you frame it like that, and that's why you do it. But if you really want to escape this ominously deathly whirlpool of intersectional oikophobia, need I remind you, playing the Think of the Whammons card is only going to land you well and truly within the grip of that whirlpool. In case anyone didn't know, the reason the powers that be have become obsessed with quote-unquote racial justice and LGBT justice and whatnot, is because we left a bunch of feminists in charge, and one day someone said to them, why don't you think of someone else for a change? That's what you do, isn't it? As progressives, you think of other people, right? So how about you as feminists think about someone else for a change? So they went, okay, we'll think about black people and gay people, and trans people, and disabled people, and immigrants, like, anything but men, right? Women completely ran out of problems, identifiably systemic problems, like three generations ago. So rather than d dissolve themselves like any honest activists would, they instead moved on to identifying other people's problems and wearing them like a skin suit. Now now they have a much 
wider net to cast, do you see? If anything bad happens to a homosexual person or a transsexual person or a non-white person or a non-able-bodied person or a non-native person, if that non-native person happens to be non-white, <coughs> basically, anyone who isn't a straight, white, cisgendered, able-bodied male, we focus on that area of lived experience and we go... Those people have it worse. Dot, dot, dot. Just like women have it worse. Black people are, are overrepresented in prisons in the same way what women are overrepresented in prisons. Oh, something. Look, it doesn't matter. This, this other thing matters. This thing where women have it worse. It's, yeah, it's a treadmill that drags everything down the progressive stack or up or whatever and into the coffers of the ultimate victims of everything, the women. See, that's why it keeps getting worse. Because even when we're trying to propagandize, propagandize our way out of the racial hysteria and out of the LGBT hysteria and out of the medical fascism hysteria, we still can't help defaulting to the think of the women hysteria. And that's not actually helping. Uh, on the contrary, it's the very vector of exclusion that originally put us on this trajectory to, towards out-of-control authoritarianism. Think of the women. All righty, we'll go ahead and think of the women. Well, it seems what women want more than anything else is protection. Oh, look, society is prioritizing protection over freedom. To an increasingly alarming degree. How on earth could this have happened? Imagine. Just imagine the concept of. Think of the men. <laughs> I, I, I know it sounds mental on its face. But just try. Like imagine if it even existed. Outside this obscure. Quote unquote community of ours. Such a concept would have to conclude. Or at least involve the notion that what men want more than anything else is freedom. And that we should prioritise freedom over protection, over safety, over restricting your freedoms for your quote-unquote own good. Or indeed, greater good. If, if our society truly gave the first fraction of a toss about men and their nature and their love of freedom, then what's happening all around us right now would not be happening. So when you resort to behold our enemies, look what our enemies are doing to the women. I understand where you're coming from strategically, but I disagree with your approach strategically. The most fundamental nuclear option of emotional rhetoric is think of the women, but the realm of emotional rhetoric is already dominated by human nature and the institutions we have built around this path of least resistance. When you play the Think of the Women card, you place us nowhere but right back at the outer rim of the whirlpool where the current is easily strong enough to drag us right back into its epicentre. Try thinking of the men as well. Just try thinking of the men. <laughs> okay, as, as gay as that sounds, try thinking of the men. Because thinking of men and the passion they have for individual freedom might actually land us in the shores beyond the whirlpool where we at least have a chance of escaping before the singularity swallows our foundations and becomes... A gargantuan sinkhole. Remember, if you see it happening to a woman, if somewhere in the media you see it happening to a woman, chances are pretty high that it's already happened to men considerably more than once. But you never heard about it because nobody bloody cared. Nobody bloody cares about men's privacy. If, if this happened to a male senator... 
the video would not be released. They wouldn't have the hubris to film what they're doing. You'd just get an article in print saying, the senator refused to answer our questions. And you read it, and just like that, the Murray Gelman amnesia washes over you, and you never even wonder what happened there. It never even occurred to you that they followed a man into the men's toilet to get this non-reaction. I mean, who even cares? It's just a men's toilet. That's not a safe space. The men's room is just a space where we heard all of the shuffling, knuckle-dragging Untermensch so that the Ubermensch can have their safe space. I realise the, the imagine the roles reversed line of argument is the oldest one of the book at this point, but it still has its uses. Whenever something happens to a woman, a woman, ask yourself, if this happened to a man, would I care? Would I consider it a news story? I, 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 I would encourage you to err on the side of... There's no need to exact even more control over people just because of this incident happening to happen. The, the way we treat men is closer to what is sensible than the way we treat women. We treat women like innocent children with no agency. We treat men like adults with all the agency. Men don't have all the agency, but they are at least adults. Women are not without agency, and they are certainly not children. You need to put more effort into pulling away from your instinctive moral marginalization along the lines of gender. Because women, thank you very much, are not children. Just see if you can picture women as adults in the same way you picture men as adults. Even though that picture you have of men will typically come with a nonchalant sense of ah, bollocks to them, they're adults, they can fend for, fend for themselves. That's right. That's a correct appraisal. Again, I'm, I'm not excusing this behaviour. Adults have boundaries too. Adults have dignities too. Adults shouldn't have to be stalked and harassed in the bathroom either. But when it happens to a woman, don't act like it's happening to a child. All right? Because that mindset is exactly what got us here. It is, it's, uh, yeah, at this point I'm repeating myself. A, a relatively short point I felt like making there. I was I was planning on voicing it on, on this week's Tuesday show, but it never came up in the story, so I thought I'd say it here instead. Yeah, I do a stream every, every Tuesday. Like, every Tuesday for seven years now. Do go ahead and check out that if, it, if this is news to you. <laughs> It is literally news. It's a news show. And we often cover stories before everyone else has. It's called Honey Badger Radio News. Although <clears throat> most of it is old now. Such is the nature of news. Okay, bye. Don't hit like. Don't hit subscribe. Don't hit the notification bell. Nothing works. Nobody cares. Nothing matters. We will all suffer and die in the end. But keep your spirits up. Cheer up, it might never happen. Oh, wait, it has happened. Never mind, eh? I repeat, bye.